Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I know that I shared with you yesterday that I'll be on today at one, but fortunately my calendar got cleared. And so here I am. So if you're there, please, uh, you know, jump in and I'll be delighted to see you um, as we get ready for our devotional and prayer moment. This is Pastor Thornton coming from the Salem Missionary Baptist Church for a noonday prayer and devotional moment. Um, I was able to just move some things and able to be on now. And so I, I know that yesterday I said that I would be on at um, one o'clock, but um, fortunately I'm able to be here now. So I hope that you're able to join me. Um, okay, so some notices and announcements. Um, this Sunday, this Sunday is Father's Day. So please join us for our Father's Day breakfast. We used to call it Father and Son breakfast, but now it's just Father's Day breakfast. Come and join us. A wonderful breakfast will be prepared for you, a wonderful program. The men's chorus will be singing, and um, our speaker will be um, the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Hammond for our Father's Day breakfast. Also, um, join us for our worship experience. Um, and it's also communion. It's also communion. And it's so important for us to come together and commune together because God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible reminds us that greater love hath no man than this, but that a man lay down his life for his friends. And so I hope that you will join us for our um Father's Day service and communion. All right. Again, um, I'm sad to announce the transitioning of Sister Mildred Tucker. I don't have any details at this moment, but hopefully I will have them soon. And as soon as I get them, I will share them with you. All right. Let me wait for some of you to come on. Um, I'm glad to see you, Ms. Brian, Ms. Mary Lawrence. I guess there are others who are looking for me at one, which is the time that I said I would be here. But fortunately, um, my calendar got cleared and I'm able to be with you now. Um, so please, um, you know, join me. Um, thank you, um, Wanda. I see that you had a wonderful birthday. Happy birthday to you. And um, we're going to go ahead and move right into the word. Going to move right into the word that we have today. Yesterday, we talked out of Isaiah. Isaiah. Um, uh, chapter six, where we talked about when the year the King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up in his train, filled the whole temple. Um, and so I think this week we'll be dealing with the Old Testament passages, with the Old Testament passages. Um, today, I want to talk, um, and this is just motivation, really, from the conference that I was just at, at Hampton's Ministers Conference in um, Hampton, Virginia, where we have some of the best preaching and teaching in, um, I think, the world, be, be it black or white. And so wonderful presenters this week. And um, I want to speak today for a few minutes out of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37, a very familiar passage um, for us that I want to share with you from and let you know that the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. Yeah, there are others coming on. Thank you, um, Sister Natalie Crawford. Good to see you. Good to see you. Let me see who else has joined us. Just going to just take another 30 seconds. Richard Fagan, thank you for being here. Okay, Sharita, um, Mary Lawrence, Wanda, good. Natalie Crawford, Iris Gaddis Hazel, wonderful. Good to see you. All right. Um, so in Ezekiel, we know that God is able to do anything. I don't care how dry it is, how dark it is, how bleak it is. Know that our God is able. Here it is. Ezekiel says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full he says, um, a bones. Watch this now. The important thing that 
Ezekiel says is that the hand of the Lord was upon him. It's wonderful to have the hand of the Lord upon you and, and brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of dry bones. He led me back and forth amongst them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sir and Lord, you alone know. Let me pause right there and talk with you for, for, for a few minutes. One of the things here is that everything that happens to us is not because of the devil. Ezekiel says that the hand of the Lord was upon him. And he was brought out by the spirit of the Lord into a valley of dry bones, he says, and they were very dry. Sometimes God in order to get a message to you and through you will take you into a dry and desert place. Understand that not everything that happens to you that's not good happens to you because of the devil. Some things happens to you because God is trying to teach you something. And he says, God asked the question, son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel gives the right answer. He says, sovereign Lord, you alone know. If he had said, God, these bones will live, it would be presumptuous that he knows what God is going to do. He said, God, these bones will not live. It would, be, it would say that he doesn't believe that God has the power to do what God can do. Sometimes you got to just leave it to God and say, Lord, you know. I don't know which way I'm going. I don't know whether to go left or right. Lord, you know. Lord, show me the way. Lord, I don't know whether to go up or down. I don't know whether to apply for this job or not to apply for this job. I don't know whether I should go for this loan or not go for this loan. Lord, guide me. Lord, you alone know. And we are in the best position when we put our trust and our faith and our hope in God because God alone knows. He knows the end from the beginning. And when we put it in his hands, God will answer. Then God said to me, now God speaks to, I'm, I'm, I'm to Ezekiel. After Ezekiel places his faith and his hope in God, he says, prophesy to the bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Ah, this seems like ridiculous. And I often say that God cannot perform the miraculous for us until we are willing to do the ridiculous for him. He asked God. God asked him to prophesy to these bones. I mean, does it make sense to preach to dead and dry bones? It's difficult to preach to people who are alive in warm bodies. But if God asks you to do something, do what God asks you to do. Because I'm still a witness that when we do the ridiculous for God, God will, in fact, do the miraculous. This is what the Lord, this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. As he begins to preach, as he begins to prophesy, God says, I will make breath into you and will, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As you begin to preach, as you begin to prophesy, as you begin to be obedient to what God says, God can do the impossible. God says, look, I'm going to bring tendons to these bones and then I'm going to cover it with flesh and I'm going to breathe into it the breath of life and these bones will live. You may be in a dark and dire situation, but you will live if you can be obedient and do the ridiculous that God asks you to do and watch God do wonders in your life. And then when you do what God says and God gives it life, God will also give it movement. Somebody said movement. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh 
appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. But God brought movement and God brings a rattling and a togetherness to them. But they're not yet alive because really some of us are moving, but we're not living. We're making motion, but we're not alive. What causes us to live is the breath of God. God breathed in the man and man became a living soul. My prayer as I come to closure this morning is that the spirit of the living God will fall afresh on us, that God will melt us, mold us, fill us, and then use us to his glory. Here it is. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. And say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded and breath entered them and they came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Let's stop there. And so a couple of things I want to say to you is that understand that whatever you're going through, that God has the answer. Ezekiel says, when God asked this question, son of man, can these bones live? He says, sovereign Lord, thou knoweth. Understand that God knows the end from the beginning. I heard Jesus say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And then we got to be willing to do the ridiculous for God and watch God do the miraculous. God says, prophesy to the bones, preach to the bones, preach to dead things. There's some things going on in our lives, but if we give them the word of God, God will cause movement. Thank you, Natalie, for putting it in the chat, movement. And as we preach, as we bring people, sometimes we're trying to solve problems for people, maybe just bring them to church so they can hear the word of God. On this past Sunday, I had a gentleman who I've done a lot of work with, but he brought one of his staff to church. He says, you know, if I can just get them to church where they could hear the word of God, as they heard the word, their lives began to be transformed. And they came and told me, he said, Pastor, I'm going to make a U-turn. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do things differently according to the word that I heard today. And so he preached. And there was movement. The bones began to move. And then the ultimate prayer that we must pray is that the spirit of the living God would fall afresh on us, that he would melt us, mold us, fill us, and then use us to his glory. We'll continue this tomorrow. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. We know that the grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God stands forever. Thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity to call on your name. Now, oh God, pray for those that are sick and shut in, those that have needs that are too, too big for them. We pray for the Mildred Tucker family, that you would um, comfort them in this moment. We pray, O oh God, for those that are in hospital, those that are in nursing home, those that have problems that are too big for them. We pray for our young people, O oh God, you will cover them and keep them from hurt, harm, and danger. We pray now, O oh God, that you will help us continue to study your word, to show ourselves approved unto God, people that need not to be ashamed, rightly the word, but divide in the word of truth. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, and then use us to your glory. Hear our prayer now, incline your ears to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with me today. Sorry about the debacle, um, but thank you for being here. And may God bless you real good. Let's receive the benediction and we'll look to see you on tomorrow. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out and you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen. God bless you.